Terrell, good morning. European authorities echoing many of the same concerns as U.S. law enforcement, noting tensions stemming from the Israel-Hamas war are raising the risk of terrorist attacks around the holidays. This morning, Europe on alert. <laughs> Denmark's prime minister calling the situation extremely serious after the arrest of three people in her country accused of plotting terrorist attacks against Jewish people and Jewish institutions. In Germany, three more suspects now in custody and another detained in the Netherlands. German prosecutors saying all four are believed to be Hamas members and were arrested under suspicion of plotting anti-Jewish attacks. Hamas denying those suspects are connected to the militant group. European authorities saying they're now staying hypervigilant as the Israel-Hamas war stokes tensions. FBI Director Christopher Wray saying the U.S. is at its highest threat level since before 9-11. We're working around the clock to identify and disrupt potential attacks by those inspired by Hamas's horrific terrorist attacks in Israel. Back in Tel Aviv, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu meeting with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Thank you for your support. As the death toll across Gaza grows, the White House says Sullivan is urging Israel to pursue what it calls a lower intensity operation and scale back its most intense fighting. A U.S. official confirming a New York Times report saying a lower intensity operation may involve the use of smaller groups of elite Israeli forces that would carry out more precise missions to find and kill Hamas leaders, rescue hostages, and destroy tunnels. I want them to be focused on how to save civilian lives, not stop going after Hamas, but be more careful. The Senate now planning to reconvene Monday to take up the president's defense funding request, which includes Israel and Ukraine aid, and to vote on it next week. Talks had stalled over Republican demands to include tighter border policy. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News.